Hello, everyone, and welcome to the reimbursement webinar for elementary and secondary school emergency relief recovery grant programs, also known as the ESSER grant programs. My name is Elizabeth Corcoran, and I'm going to be walking us through our webinar today. Um, and just an overview of what we'll be looking at. First, we're going to look at a quick timeline update to look at where reimbursement requests fall in your grant timeline. Then we're going to review an overview of reimbursement requests and how to prepare one, and then finally walk through what a reimbursement request looks like in EGMS. So this is a quick snapshot of the FY21 application timeline. Where most people are now is on the far left with the final pending approval of the FY21 ESSER applications. Um, and once an FY21 application is approved, you are then ready to start submitting reimbursements. The deadline for all FY21 reimbursement requests that an LEA wants reimbursed before the end of the year is December 1st. So make sure if for your LEA, if it's important to get FY21 costs reimbursed before the end of the year, that those are submitted by December 1st. Once an LEA has submitted the last reimbursement request for FY21, you can initiate a closeout report. And once you begin a closeout report in EGMS, no further reimbursement requests can be submitted for about two to three months. And that two to three months is referred to here as the closeout period. You can begin submitting reimbursement requests again once your closeout report is approved, which will also be the, the same time that your FY22 application will be released to you. So you can control when the closeout period takes place by submitting your final FY21 reimbursement request and beginning that closeout report. So we're gonna discuss a little more about what is included in a reimbursement request and how to prepare one. So as I've mentioned, reimbursement requests can begin to be submitted in EGMS after an FY21 ESSER application is approved. And the last reimbursement request for FY21 should be submitted on December 1st of this year. However, there is a important to note, since the period of availability for ESSER recovery funding grants covers several years for all three ESSER grants, FY21 expenses can be reimbursed in later fiscal years. So if there are still expenses that you did not enter into a reimbursement re request and get in by December 1st, you will have an opportunity to reimburse these expenses in later fiscal years. And remember again, once you initiate your closeout report, there will be about a two to three month window in which you will not be able to submit any reimbursement requests. So here are some helpful tips for preparing your reimbursement request and what all you will need to include. You should have on hand your system for award management date, your SAM date. Uh, the This is a date that is required field in the EGMS system, you will put it in yourself, um, and it cannot be expired or passed by the, the time you submit the reimbursement request. So it needs to be a current date. And you should also, when you're preparing a reimbursement request, you should open your ESSER FY21 application that aligns with the reimbursement request that you're submitting, and make sure that everything you're submitting is aligned with the approved application, including the budget codes, uh, the costs, as well as the period of reimbursement. For FY21, the period of reimbursement starts uh, for costs on, that happened on or after March 13th of 2020 through September 30th of 2021. 
And lastly, you're going to need to gather some documentation for some of your costs in your reimbursement request, and we will go over those next. LEAs are only required to submit documentation for two spending priority areas, the professional services and equipment. Excuse me, for professional services categories and the equipment categories. Um, you should, however, maintain documentation for all costs, even though their only required costs, or only required documentation is for professional services and equipment. So for both these categories, you're going to need to submit two documents. One is the proof of payment, and the other is the proof of the receipt of goods and services. And I'm going to go over a few different documents that could satisfy uh, these two documentation requirements. So for proof of receipt of goods or services, this could take several forms. You only need to submit one. I would recommend submitting the best available documentation that you have. It could be a contract for professional services. Uh, it's most likely you're going to have an invoice and for the invoice, you need to make sure it includes the invoice number, vendor address, and total dollar amount. For professional development, it could resemble a sign-in sheet. Um, and, and for equipment, it could be an equipment receipt. You only need to submit one of these, one that satisfies the proof of receipt of goods or services. For proof of payment, uh, there are several ways you could satisfy this requirement. It could be a purchase order, a check, or a payment confirmation screenshot. Again, you just need to upload one that proves the LEA did pay for the goods or services that were received. And remember, each cost will need both of these. So if you have four costs in professional services, you'll need eight pieces of documentation because each cost will need both types. Of documentation. So now we're going to walk through what the reimbursement request process looks like in EGMS. Step uh, first step, you're going to log into EGMS and make sure that you are selecting 2021 from the drop down menu. Then you'll select the ESSER grant that you want to submit a reimbursement request for from your dashboard. And on the grant tile, you'll be able to select reimbursement request to begin a submission. So this is what the reimbursement request looks like in EGMS. You have an overview tab on the far left, which has some helpful reminders and uh, some more information about the required documents in there. The next tab, the one that's showing on this screen is the reimbursement data import tab. This is an optional tab, not required to be filled out. If you have many costs, you might want to select the button at the bottom, create template, and it will allow you to enter your costs into Excel, the Excel template that will download and then upload those. Again, this is helpful if you have a lot of costs but not required. And then you'll see the, the next five or six tabs are the cost categories, salaries and benefits, professional services, equipment, supplies and materials, fixed property costs, and other objects. These align with your budget and your approved application. These are the cost categories. Each has the same set of fields um, to enter your data into, and we will go through these in, in later slides. And essentially, you just re select the costs that fit in each category from your approved application and input the data for those costs into the appropriate cost category tab. And then the last two tabs we'll go over. There's a review summary is the second to last tab. And then your last tab is where you will submit. So this is what a data entry tab looks like. There, again, there are six cost categories, and each of them has this expenditure data set of fields. And this is where you are entering your costs. Uh, starting on the far left, you have your budget codes. Again, select the budget codes that match with the costs in your 
approved FY21 application. You have the site, uh, that's the school site, if there is one that's specific to the costs in the budget. Next column, you have your vendor, that's the name of the vendor, if, if that is a needed field. If it's a contract, you have a column for your contract obligation date. And next is your expenditure description column in green, in the green box. And this can be the same as your FY21 approved application. The same cost description you entered there can also be put into this box. Next column is an invoice date. This, if you have submitted an invoice, um, this should match from the uh, invoice that you submitted. In the purple box, the total invoice amount. Uh, this is not necessarily the same as what you want to be reimbursed. It should match, if you have attached an invoice as documentation, it should match the invoice, even if you are not requesting the full invoice amount in your reimbursement request. Next column is check number. If you used a check, please enter the number here. If not, put in a. Next column is the check or payment date. Again, if you are attaching a check as documentation, please make sure this matches your attached check. In the gold box, there's a column for expenditure for special populations. You should check this box if the cost in the line item relates to resources or support for students of a specific population, such as students with disabilities, English language learners, students facing homelessness, or, or other subgroups. And the last tab you, you will need to fill out is in the brown box, the amount requested. Again, this does not need to be the same as the invoice amount. You can request up to the full invoice amount. You can also request up to your full budget, but you cannot submit a request for more than your budget. The next step is uh, on the same data entry tab. If you scroll down, this is you will see the calculate totals button at the bottom of every cost category tab. After you have entered all your data, you scroll down and you'll see this button. And when you click calculate totals, the yellow highlighted total row will add up to all the data that you have entered. Also, when you scroll down at the bottom of every cost category tab, you will see the box where you can upload your documentation. It says attach supporting documentation with the choose file button next to it. When you hit that, you can select documentation documentation, and upload it here. And remember, you need two types of documentation for everything that's in your professional services tab and everything in your equipment tab. So once you have completed each tab with the cost that you are requesting for each tab, you'll be at your second to last step, which is to review the request summary. So if you have hit calculate totals on all the tabs where you have entered costs, this summary tab will show all the data you have entered automatically. In the gold box, the grand total row, you will see the total of your reimbursement request. This should match everything you have entered. If it does not, make sure you go back and hit calculate totals. Um, in order to get it to match. Okay, if everything looks good in the reimbursement request summary, you can navigate over to the last tab, the submit tab, and this will bring you to this page. So you will need to run a consistency check before you hit the final submission. Um, it will alert you if there's any information that is incorrect. Uh, you should go back and fix that information according to the red text. And if nothing is amiss with your reimbursement request, you can hit lock request. Uh, if you need to go back and do edits after you lock it, you can lock the request, unlock the request with the button on the far right. 
but you cannot do that after the reimbursement request has been submitted. So just a reminder, um, this is another snapshot of our application timeline. You should have communicated to your grant manager the date you would like to submit your final FY21 reimbursement request, um, which effectively can adjust your closeout period. If you would like to close out earlier, you can submit that requ request earlier. If you would like to close out later, the, F, the final FY21 reimbursement request can be submitted later. Uh, if you have any questions about preparing and submitting reimbursement requests, you can contact your grant manager or you can contact aussie.sr.dc.gov. And of course, there are always um, materials and resources for you, including this webinar on the ESSER Recovery Funding website.